So you're looking to build your own badass bulletproof one-ton axle so you can finally wheel with the big dogs down the buggy trails? Well, if I got the episode just for you, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to build your own moto-built Dana 6. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today I am keyed up to be back in the garage and here's the reason I am finally back to work on this Dana 60. As you can see behind me, I've got everything laid out. I've got the 60 on stand, all the parts for the truss already laid out, and my welder. And this is going to be a great day because I finally get to see some progress. Now in this episode, we're going to be putting a motobuilt truss on an 05 and up Dana 60. You may have done one before, this may be your first one, but there are some things that you need to know and we're going to hit every point. Now the first thing I want you to do is take that big box of parts and I want you to lay them out. It's going to look like a giant erector set. Uh, that's all right. Uh, once you get everything laid out, we're going to start looking at the instructions. It's going to go together. Everything's keyed, so you really can't screw this up with my help. We're going to get you through it. Now, I've already got the install instructions pulled up. This is going to be the old 5 Up Dana 60 install kit. This is what our final product is going to end up looking like. Now, I'm going to come down here. We're going to make sure that we've got all our parts so that once we start getting into the groove, we're doing all our welding. We don't have to stop in the middle of this because we're missing something. Now, before you can start putting your truss on, the first thing you have to do is look over these tubes and I want you to make sure that you've hit any spots where you've ground down into this tube and make sure you fill them with weld and then reground them back flat. This is important to make sure that you didn't introduce any weak points into those tubes. Now, once you've taken things like this, this large cut, you filled it with weld, you ground it flat, then I want you to come back and we're gonna take the end of these tubes, we're gonna run a weld all the way around. And that's gonna help secure these tubes, make sure we don't have them roll inside the casting. And this is really important on the driver's side because we've just cut away so much casting that we can't use anymore. And we need to make sure that this driver's side tube with as little tube that's pressed in still is more secured. So we're gonna knock that out. Once that's done, we can start the fun stuff, which is actually working with the truss. So now that we're done welding up the ends of our tubes to the casting, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our truss and we're going to get the top plate. Because there's one more thing we need to do before we start going to work on this axle. We need to figure out where we need to tap for a locker. Now this will be dependent on whether or not you plan to use an air locker or not. Uh, if you're going to be using one, then you have to tap an airline exit out of the casting. Now this is easy to do because all we really need is just to set this top plate down. It's going to center right on our airline. And from there, we'll know that we're in place. It'll line up perfectly with the vent tube that's already in your axle. And from there, all you have to do is make a punch mark and you'll know where exactly you need to place your airline. Make a pilot hole with a small bit and you're going to work your way up slowly up to the size 7 16 once we're at 7 16 then we're going to use a 1 quarter NPT thread and we are actually going to cut threads into this casting. And there. And we've got perfect threads. Threads no problem. Nice and smooth. So now that we're actually ready to start putting on our truss, I have gone ahead and put on one layer of steel it so that we don't have to worry about any rust issues underneath our truss. So we're going to go ahead and grab that piece and we're going to put on our first section, which is actually going to be the top plate. We're going to use two of our pieces that are going to key in underneath that. We have one there and one here. At this point, the instructions tell us that it wants us to tack weld the underside gusset at the keyed points on the top of the truss. Once that's done, you can slide the rear plate of the truss into place using the keyed points at the left and right side, and then you'll tack weld those into place as well. 
Now you can take your front plate to your truss, slide it into position, and tack weld it on each side of the truss, but we're not going to tack weld it onto the tubes just yet. Take your front diff cover, bolt it into position on the axle so that you can tack weld the truss onto the axle and know that everything lines up. So at this point, I hadn't yet figured out that I had an audio failure, but what I was trying to explain now is that this is the point where you would normally put together your upper control arm links and tack weld them into the spots that are keyed on the top of your upper control arm. We're not going to be doing that because we're doing a different setup with our three link. Normally, you would take their two pieces that create the upper control arm link and you would drop them into these keyways, tack weld, and continue with your instructions. But for once again, for us, we're using a different setup and we're not gonna be using these right now. So now you're gonna take 405917, your square piece, and it's going to key into this little pocket in the corner. And then you'll take 405911 and it will key in off of that. And then you'll put a tack weld to hold it into place. There we go. And then our next 405911 little tab bracket is going to key in on the driver's side. And once that's in its spot, you'll put a spot weld in it as well. Now we're going to start using three pieces and uh, we're going to make our track bar bracket. So the first one we're going to grab is number 15, 16 is our second one, and then 20. So the way we're going to put this together, start with number 20. We're gonna drop it into that keyway right here on the passenger side. Now, we're gonna take number 16 and we're gonna key it into the bottom of 20. Take 15 and we're gonna drop it into the bottom keyway of 16. We have a couple of strategic little spots we need to put a tack at to hold all of this together. We're gonna to put one here, one here, one here and then we got to make sure that this is the proper distance and that it's even all the way up and down okay okay so for this part what you have to do is they've supplied a little adapter piece you're going to run a sway bar bolt through it up here two quarter inch bolts down here and this is just a temporary hold just to align your lower control arm, and then you're just gonna put some spot welds to hold it into place. And then once you've put your spot welds in, you can actually take this alignment piece out and throw it away. You don't actually keep this on your truss. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now we're gonna assemble our lower shock brackets. And you're gonna have two pieces, they're gonna to key together. Uh, for us, this has been a little tight, so it's taken a little pneumatic persuasion to get these to work together. And then they're gonna go into this keyed area right over here. All right, so now that you're starting to see your axle take shape, it's time to put your spring perches on. So we're gonna take these two pieces here. You've got a top piece to your spring retainer and you have a weld-in washer. Uh, those are gonna go on and you're just going to weld this weld washer into place. And then this is gonna sit on top of your spring perch side piece. All right, now this is looking great. At this point, normally what we would be doing is taking your upper control arms and we would be welding in your Johnny joints that go in the top of them. We're not doing that step right now because we're gonna be using a three-link setup, so we won't be using this arm right now. We will be using this side, 
but our upper control arm, we're gonna make sure that it's in the perfect position, so we're not gonna put ours on until this is underneath our Jeep. And that's important because you need to make sure that before you start finish welding, that you put yours underneath the vehicle and that everything lines up with the locations that it needs to go at. Now, for us, everything's where it needs to be and we're getting to finally start finish welding. If there's one thing I want to leave you with at the end of this video is that when you're doing your finish welding, you want to take the approach of moving from one area to another and not welding in one concentrated area all in a row. If you do it that way, you do increase your chances of warping your axle tube or your truss or both. And if you just take your time and you notice how I'm bouncing from one end of the axle to the other end, it really gives the last area that you just finished welding on time to cool off before you come back and continue that row. So here's a quick tech tip to help save you a lot of headache and heartache when you go to put your axle together. When you get to your control arm brackets and your axle brackets, adding in all that heat while you're welding can actually cause them to deflect inward and prevent you from getting your end links to actually drop into its spot. Now, there's a way that you can stop this from happening. The first way you can do it is you can go to the hardware store and grab a long threaded bolt and three nuts. Now you can run this through your bracket and use the nuts to sandwich each side of the bracket and force it open just enough that your control arm end link will drop into its spot, no problem. Now, this will stop your bracket from deflecting inward while you weld it into place completely. The other thing you can do, and this is the way that I personally do it, just because I have it laying around. I keep a Barnes four wheel drive extra end link laying around. I use these on a lot of my projects, so I keep one just for mocking up. Now what I do is I take one of these extra end links and I drop it into my bracket. And before I start to weld, I do one more thing. And this one is the key tip. Take a washer, or in my case, I keep a spacer, and you want to drop this right in place on one side of your control arm end link. This gives you just a small amount of deflection extra so that when you finish welding it all together, it's not completely so tight that it's difficult to slide your end link in and out. This gives that little bit of extra space so that when you're finished welding, your end link slides in and out just like factory. All right, so this is it, the finished product. I am loving how the Motobuilt Trust Kit for this Dana 60 has turned out. So happy I used it. The next thing you wanna do, cause you're not going good. No, I need you to go left to right on this axle and make sure that you didn't miss any spot because there's so many little brackets and tabs that we've just put onto this axle, it's really easy to have overlooked something. Once you're done with that, you can shoot some paint on this thing and you're ready to move on to the next step, which is adding the Motobuilt high steer onto the knuckles. Now, if this is something you're looking forward to doing, then I want you to subscribe to us because our next video coming out is for the Motobuilt high steer kit for the Dana 60 knuckles. It's gonna be the perfect piece to complement their truss kit. So thank you very much for watching us all the way to the end. If you found this video beneficial, do me a favor and subscribe because we're always looking to put out more content that's helpful and beneficial to people who want to build and wheel their rig. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Enjoy your day in the shop.